Hello, everyone. We are so happy you are back here at our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan. I am so grateful for old friends and new friends. If you are new here, welcome here. Please feel free to subscribe to our podcast and to our YouTube so you don't miss any of our podcasts. Uh, uh, maybe entertaining, but most of all, encouraging, motivating um, podcast that will help you not only to understand the reality, but also how to respond to this reality. Uh, because it's a new reality in America. It's a new reality that... Um, makes us many times wondering. <laughs> I remember in the beginning, many years ago, I was, I was pinching myself and thinking, no, that's not possible. This is not in America. I am back in, in communist Romania. Uh, but today, uh, yes, and maybe more than today, many years back, I realized, no, that's the reality of United States of America. That's the reality of uh, people uh, in America, some of them, uh, trying to bring socialists to America. So we have first to understand the reality that we live under. And it's a new reality. It's uh, something that we have to learn and we have to know how to respond. Um, there are many people that uh, are texting me or calling me or emailing me and asking me, what can we do during this time? And how is that possible that America, that was the land of free and the freedom that we have in America, is slipping away from us? And um, yeah, that's, that's true. But I also noticed that some people are so discouraged that they don't even want to learn or understand the new reality. They kind of close their, their eyes and try to accommodate themselves to the reality, try to see what can I do not to um, offend this person or offend the other one and so forth. And that is one of maybe the most dangerous position that you can have. And first of all, you have to understand the reality. And second, you have to understand that your voice is important. Your voice is um, and each one of us voice it's important and our voice and our actions can change america yes we want to have our representative to represent us that's a, the reason they are called representative that's the reason why we elected them but many of them they don't represent us anymore just look around us. We have, and everybody is watching, you know, the courtroom with Fanny Wills and uh, Nate uh, uh, Wade and her lover and how she uses uh, uh, or allegedly uses uh, her position uh, in, uh, in Georgia to um, take advantage and enrich herself and extend this uh, this um, trial as much as possible. And now there is a, a trial to disqualify her. We have uh, Trump's uh, cases. I mean, there are so many cases. And the one that we watched a few days ago is the one in New York with millions of dollars that the judge decided to punish the uh, Trump family, even though there is no one person who was harmed by this, uh, by their actions. We have also immigration issues. Like never before, we have millions of uh, immigrants under these administrations that are coming to America. Many of them, even now, the CIA it, it tells us, is telling us that many of those immigrants are part of the gangs. They are recruiting, recruited now or even uh, brought here 
by uh, the, the whatever you call mafia, um, you know, existed in, in America, the Mexican mafia that are trying to do horrible things. People are talking about uh, terrorists. They are organizing things here. You have also um, people questioning the mental capacity of the president of United States to be president now. We will have in a uh, in few days a uh, report that um, will be presented to everyone in, uh, in our um, uh, Senate and Congress and uh, about why the report was about the fact that our president doesn't have capacity to stay in trial. And the question is, if he doesn't have capacity to stay in trial, how in the world he will have capacity to be president? We have also war in Israel and the possibility of war in many other places. We have uh, military personnel that was that were killed and we have attacks on our military bases outside of the United States, attacked in so many ways. We have Putin that killed his uh, most vocal uh, dissident, and the list can go on and on. And I understand that when you have those kind of information. When you have only negative, negative information, it's so easy to get depressed. It's so easy to think, well, who am I? I'm just one person. I can't do anything. I cannot change it. And I, all I have to do is see if I can survive. Well, I am telling you, you are wrong. You are wrong. I have been in uh, circumstances and in a society worse than we are right now in America. Many, some of you already um, read my memoir, Saving My Assassin. I defend in, uh, Christian and human rights cases under communist in uh, communist Romania. I took the dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu, to court, and I was a young lawyer and a, a young young person, and I still believe that my voice was important and that uh, with my voice and action, I can make a difference. And by the grace of God, I am alive. I took him to court. Many of my cases became part of the United States Department of State's uh, reports on human rights violation. Also, many of my cases became part of United Nations reports on human rights violation. And finally, the dictator was uh, exposed to the entire world. And uh, um, at the end, more, a year after the after I left Romania, because he he was ready to kill me. That's the reason why the the book it's called Saving My Assassin. And a year after President Ronald Reagan made a deal with him to give him one more year of. Uh, most favored national status, I came to America and the revolution started in Romania and he was killed. So for 30 something years, he is dead and I'm alive. And I explain and encourage people all over the world to understand that we, our voice is important, no matter the age, no matter where you are in a free country or in a capital, in a, a communist country, socialist country, your voice is important. Yes, I am privileged that the Lord saved me. Many people speaking uh, against the dictator will die, like the one they just died in in uh, Russia. Many uh, people say he was killed by Putin's government, but many of them survive and are speaking out about how horrible socialist is. Because why? We need to speak about this because one, the government in America, is trying really hard to bring socialists to America. Not only that, but brainwashes students in, uh, in um, um, 
college and universities and started last year, they started to do from younger age, from uh, even uh, first grade and some some in some area, some liberal uh, states, even earlier than that. We have to understand that a government cannot exist by itself. It's supported. It's supported by our silence and by our inaction. When you speak up, you encourage others also to speak up. Yes, we want representatives uh, to represent us and to represent our values and so forth. But when they don't, then you have to stand up and call them up, tell them why uh, you think that they don't represent you in, in a way they should represent you. And more than that, you can go and uh, um, run for that position. Go to school and be in, uh, involved in your schools, uh, your children's schools. In your business, make sure that you apply all these uh, uh, principles that will protect you and will protect others and also will help you and others to stand up for the truth. Yes, it is a depressing. Uh, believe me. I live under socialists and communists. It's hard and it's heartbreaking to see that America has changed so much. But this is not the worst of worst. If we don't speak, if we keep silent, believe me, it will be worse. What you are seeing right now, watching, let's take the example of Fanny Will's uh, testimony. In, in a courtroom. She was so arrogant. She was an example of what these liberals believe. They believe that they are part of the elite, uh, the elite that will bring socialists to America, and they are above the law. The way she responded in the courtroom, the way she uh, turned even to the judge to argue with the judge, or to argue with other uh, other lawyers, it proves to us what she believes and what she stands for. She was just a witness there. Go to the courtroom. A witness is not allowed to do what she is allowed to do. And the, uh, other, the other judges and lawyers in New York or other places, they are trying to do everything like that. No matter what they, they learn in law school, they don't apply the law as they supposed to apply. And if you think that you are not affected by that, believe me, these people are the first one, if it's Trump or his family or some other people that are, I will call them dissidents. I know I was a dissident and I know when you start to speak up against a, a government who wants to impose their will to you and not respect the law, believe me that the government will go after you. But when you have more people standing up, the government will push back and will have to be obligated to respect the law and do what is right. This is our time. This is what we can do right now. There is so much that we can do, but not uh, by our silence, not by uh, being depressed. Recognizes that this is the reality. Yes, this is the reality. We do not live in uh, free America that we used to, to live. We live in an America where the government wants to uh, make itself the liberal government our God and to impose all these uh, uh, laws that are against the laws of, Roma of America to us. But when we stand up, that's when we, when what we, uh, um, we will win.
and the win winning is with God. You know, in Psalm 94, 16, the Lord asked us, who will rise up again for me against the wicked? Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? Don't ask yourself, someone else will do it. Don't think that you, yes, you have to keep uh, uh, lights in your home and, uh, you know, pay your rent or pay your, your mortgage or so. No. The government, it's not your resources. God is your resources. And God will protect you when you are speaking up the truth. That's what we are called to. When you read my memoir, Saving My Assassin, I want you to read chapter three at least three times because it's a story of my uncle who was not able to speak up when the time was right. He was a banker. He had his own business. And he was depressed during the time when the Russian boots with the people that love socialism started to come to Romania and started to see if they can create, impose socialists to Romania. And you know what? My uncle was so depressed, he decided someone else is going to speak. I, I don't need to speak. And he went to London for a period of time. Sure enough, when he returned from London to his business, Romania was totally changed because the government was already a socialist government. And when he went to his office, banker as a banker and he realized that the government is telling him to do all kind of things that were not according to what he knew when he left Romania he started to speak up and guess what the government took him to a psychiatric hospital to re-educate him in order for him to learn to be loyal to the new socialist government so there is a real danger. That's what I'm trying to tell you, that if we continue to be silent, not to speak up, there will be a day when we will have to be re-educated. You know, maybe you heard one time or another, not very long ago this year, when Clinton said when somebody asked her a question and she was so upset that that person asked the question, she said, these people need to be re-educated. That's what she was talking about. These people need to be taken into psychiatric hospital and learn to be on our line, to repeat our lies, to do what we tell them to do. We are not far away from that. And if we don't stand up, if we don't speak up, believe me that we will go to that situation. Let me give you another example. You learn uh, in Chicago and in New York or other places that immigration is beyond, beyond imagination. The people that the, the government is giving them free hotel, free food, washes their clothes, they give them a credit card, even they give them now um, uh, the opportunity to vote in the election. But have you heard something new? Now the government is asking, it's asking now, only asking, it's asking now to form a list and say, they said, we will love for you. We want to know who is with us and who wants to have a immigrant, illegal immigrant, or a family in your home. Today is, let's see who is with us that will give an immigrant place in your home and your food, your money, and everything. Tomorrow it's going to be your obligated 
to take an illegal immigrant. It's exactly how the communists came to Romania. First of all, the leaders of communists and socialists and communists started to confiscate the houses, first of all, for themselves, the biggest one, the best one for the se- themselves. And later on, they started to give it to people that were loyal to them. And the owner of the, the house will leave in the small list as a family in the smallest room, and they will be servants to those socialist, communist people that will live in their home. We are not far away from that if we don't stand up. No matter how depressed you might be, no matter how hard you think the situation right now is, um, believe me, it's not the end of Many times we don't know what to do, but 2 Chronicles 12 tells us we are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Yes, many people before us, they didn't know, they were attacked. They didn't know what to do, but their eyes were on Christ. And Christ is telling us to stand up for truth and freedom and to protect a country that we receive as other sacrifice for us. Jeremiah 15, 19 says, If you repent, if I will restore you that you might serve me, if you speak wordly, not worthless word, you will be my spokesperson. That's what God will do out of each one of us. Psalm 94, 15 tells us that, and it's so true in my case and can be true in your case. Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelled in a silence of death. God is with us, and God is for us. But God never told us to be silent, to submit to an ungodly culture and an ungodly government. God is telling us, be strong and courageous. He said in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will uh, counsel you with my loving eyes on you. God will give each one of us, wherever we are, the right directions and instructions. The problem is, are you ready to do what God is asking you to do? Because your voice is important and your actions are important. Jeremiah 33, 3 said, Call on me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So you might think, I don't know what to do. Well, Jeremiah 33, 3 is telling you, God is inviting you to be a co-worker with him because he set us free. Christ died for us, and freedom comes from him, not from the government. It is our our job to be the salt and the light of this world and to win this culture and America back to Christ. I have known you from back to Romania many years ago, and I have been growing with you here in America for so many years. American people are the most generous people in the entire world. American people brought Christ, truth, and freedom to people all over the world. It's time, our time, our time. I am an American citizen like you, and it's our time now to bring Christ, truth, and freedom back to America. And that it is possible. Do not look at the circumstances. Look at Christ, who can change a country to you. Christ changed Romania through me, from a socialist country to a democratic country. 
Christ calls us to do the job that he provided for each one of us and to change America through you and me. I hope that you respond to his call. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Put them in, in the down in, um, in the comments question and I will answer them. If you need any training and anything, if you want me to speak at your group, if you want to buy the, the book, you will find it at virginiaprodanbooks.com slash product slash book. If you want to um, invite me you, at virginiaprodanbooks.com, there are all the comments, way to invite me, way to, to be trained, everything that you need. So I hope that uh, you will take into consideration all those um, advice, all those uh, things that I share with you. Keep uh, contact us, keep us uh, um, in, inform of what you want to do and how God is guiding you. And of course, if you need any help, let us uh, help you. Until next time, God bless you. And don't remember your voice and your actions are important. God can use you for his glory to turn America back to him. God bless you. Bye-bye.